Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Fish Locker out on the boat. Out on a rather grey day on the boat. There's not much more to tell you than that, it's a grey day. But spring has definitely sprung. All the buds are coming out on the trees, the flowers are just starting to show. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that means that the bait fish have started to show up too. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been out in a while, we've had really bad weather. So I don't know where those bait fish are going to be. When I can find them, that will dictate what I'm going to do for the rest of my session. It's tiny, tiny neap tides at the minute, so I'm going to be doing some anchoring somewhere. That might be on some sandbanks, or it might be tight in shore on some reef, I don't quite know yet. I'll figure that out as I get there. As usual, I'll explain all the rigs, the rods, the tackle, bits and pieces as I'm doing it. Just wish me luck. We've got quite a strong southerly wind, and it's going to be getting worse later. And rain in the afternoon, so we've got that to look forward to as well. But, <laughs> the coming week is going to be terrible. So even though the conditions today aren't great, this is as good as it's going to get. You just have to make the most of it. Anyway, let's go find that bait. Ah, absolutely no risk of getting sunburnt today. That's what I'm after. I'll take that. Oh, that one there's an absolute monster. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. I'll go around and try and find them again. Get a couple more loads of that, and we're laughing. What I did there was I was steaming around, steaming around with the boat, keeping an eye on my sounder. And I found some patches of what I thought was sand eels. Because I can tell because it's just a really fine, like it's it's not a, a proper target. Just a really fine one. And I thought, well, if you start at the bottom of the food chain, of course everything likes eating little sand eels. I thought the mackerel will be somewhere behind them. And yeah. I've got where I'm going. What we have at the moment is we have the last little bit of the tide. We're just coming up to high water. So <laughs> unfortunately it means that we've got the wind coming in this direction and the tide going in that direction. So we have wind against tide. That means that we are, well as you can see, it's a little bit sloppy. Hopefully when the tide turns round and we've got wind and tide in the same direction, it should calm down a little bit. Also that means that there's no point me really, really putting the anchor down right now because all it's going to do is because I've got wind against tide I'm going to swing around all over the place and then by the time the tide changes I'll swing around again. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've got my feathers out again, I've got my mackerel tinsels, see if I can't catch a little bit more bait, some more mackerel, some sand eels, some scads, something like that. Oh there was a big big flock of guillemots flown past. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all my other rigs up. When I've got all the rods and rigs and everything like that set up, I'll show you what I'm going to do. But we'll try, uh, I'm on a sandbank, I'm on like a long area of sand. I'll set my rigs up and we'll do a little bit of fishing on the drift. Then when the tide turns, we'll try putting the anchor down. That's plan A. All I'm going to be doing while I'm fishing, while I'm fishing on the drift, kind of waiting for the tide to turn, is I've made up some hook lengths that are about two and a half to three feet long with a 3 oh specimen extra and I'm just taking off a couple of slithers of mackerel see all I did was I just took the fillets off a of mackerel I'm just cutting them into like long slithers like that and you just pass the hook through them two or three times, like that. So what I've got is I've just got some little bits. They're, they're tight on the hook, they're not going to come off the hook, but there's plenty of them to kind of trundle about in the tide. And as I'm drifting along, as the boat's moving along, these are going to pull along the bottom, and I'm hoping imitate a sand eel. Now on one road, I am fishing in best part of 40 meters of water here. On my light spinning rod I have just got 
just a locked in lead. I can't remember if this is, this might be four ounce. And this is just in, in my conflict inshore spinning rod and my, my spinning rig. There shouldn't be, shouldn't be that much drift, shouldn't be that much drag at this point in time. I'll be able to get away with just using the spinning rod. If we get a, <laughs> we get a real big fish, get a big blonde race like that, it's going to give me a good tussle on this. It's all good fun. Yeah, my other rod, I'll show you that when I line it up, but that one's just going to be a running ledger. A little whiting. I'll bite straight away on this. Give it a little tiny bit of line. Yeah, yeah, take the bite straight away on that. See the positive bite? Give it that. Show you here. What you're looking for with this is for the rod tip to just go either like straight over or it's going to go, which is what this one's got. Now, coming through that white in there, finding that white in on them feathers, it does tell me that there's going to be white in down there, so this might be a white in. The feeling is it feels like a dogfish. Drifting around like this, you can pick up all sorts. Pick up a bass, pick up a codling, pick up a gurnard, pick up a ray. So there we Yeah. Yeah, another whiting. These are all right when they get to like three or four pound, but this size, they're not much use for anything. We'll see if, if I drop straight down into another whiting again here. We're not going to be able to get through and we're going to have to go somewhere else. This setup, exactly the same hook length and bait presentation, apart from I've got a fully sliding lead. This is just, this is just a sand lead. And I'm fishing it. This is a Regiment 3 solid carbon, and I've just matched this with a Finnor Marquesa. This is a heavier setup. When we get sat at anchor, this is what I'm going to be fishing with for like the bigger fish. All I'm doing is I'm letting enough line out so that my baits are at an angle so that they're constantly in contact with the seabed. If the angle's not, if the angle's too sharp like that, they'll bounce around and they'll end up getting pulled up off the seabed. I want them to be far enough away from the boat that they're constantly, as, I, as we're drifting along, they're constantly trundling along the bottom. We're currently drifting at 0 0.6 knots. So yeah, we're not drifting fast. We've got bites on both of these rods immediately. Yeah. If we're just getting loads of white in, we're going to have to go somewhere else. Yeah. Immediately with another little white in. And I think there's one on that rod as well. Let's go and try somewhere else. We'll try on the far corner, try on the far corner of the sand. If we're still waiting on there, we'll go and try to reef. Otherwise, I would just fish all day and this is all I'm going to catch. Because they'll be down there in plague proportions. Got a little launch that time. I'm going to keep this guy alive in a tub and I'm going to use him as a live bait. I've come to the other side of the sand and I've had a quick drift around and I'm catching no whiting but I have just caught a couple more launch. So I'm going to go and try and put the anchor down. Because I'm anchoring up on soft ground I'm going to be using a plow anchor. Use a plow anchor like this so it digs into the soft. You can't use one like this in the hard ground just because it gets stuck more often. You need to use like a grapple anchor for hard ground. We are in 38, 39 metres of water. I'll swing it back round and we'll put the hook down. Generally you use two and a half to three times the depth of water in rope. I do anyway. Yeah, 
there's a 50 foot marker. I only generally anchor up on neap tides, on smaller tides. If you anchor up in a spring tide, you're going to have to use a lot more rope. And this is an Alderney ring and a boy. This is used for hauling the anchor. I'll let that bed in like that. And I'll pass the rope over, tie it to the forward cleat, then let it go and we'll swing around. Because we're still at like the back end of the tide. <laughs> this is how it is. Wind's coming in this direction. Tide's going in that direction. I'm sitting across them both. And my lines are going off the side of the boat that way. Until the tide properly changes, we're going to have this confused kind of fishing. The tide should be spinning around it next half an hour. Not what we want. Not what we're after. Well, the whiting have found me again. Better than catching now, isn't it? The dogfish have well and truly found me. I've had five in a row, and I've just had one. This is this is a live launch. Just had a bite on this as well. <laughs> yeah, the count so far is like ten whiting and five dogfish. Just a little bit chowed at the back end. That moving around, I'm hoping for a bass on that. You guessed it, another dogfish. Now these are lesser spotted cat sharks. And their skin is really abrasive. You can see how he's writhing up there. It'll get hold of your skin and writhe up on it. And it gives you like a hell of a rash. Best thing to do when you're knocking them is if you get hold of their tail and get hold of their head in the same hand like that. That way they can't bring their tail up and scratch you with it. And then with your other hand, unhook them. There you go. So yeah, hold the tail and the head in the same hand like that. Give it 15 more minutes here, and if all we're going to catch now is dogfish, we are going to move and try somewhere else. Dogfish and whiting so far today. That was a very large shark. A very, very large shark. I would say probably, yeah, there he is. It's a basking shark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like an 18 foot basking shark. Poof! Oh, I got my heart going. Just looked off the back of the boat and there was a big fin going past. <laughs> I hope it comes back round. I mean, I'm, I'm at anchor now, so I can't chase it to have a look at it. But yeah, it was uh, not as big as they get. They do get like three times that size. But yeah, that was a big, and its dorsal fin was maybe about like that big. That is a big shark, that. That is a very big shark. <laughs> I don't know how much footage you managed to get of it. Yeah, see if I can't get up ahead of it, kill the engine, try and get some underwater footage of it, because that is massive. Yeah, 
Where are you now? <laughs> it's doing circles around me. Where are you? You only really get <laughs> you only really get an idea of how big it is when it opens its mouth. Its mouth is bright white. I don't know well you can see that there. But yeah. What an amazing creature. Careful not to get too close to it. I don't want to spook it. I don't want to cause it any distress. And all I did there was I just steamed up in front of it, killed the engine, and let the fish swim up to me. Amazing. Right. Let's go and get our anchor back. Oh, I didn't pull it up, all I did was I just buoyed it off. Just tied the rope around the boy and let it go. We'll go back and pick it up. Yeah, I think we're going to move spots anyway because I was getting nout but dogfish and white in there. I picked my anchor boy back up. And I, sat, <laughs> I thought to myself, I'll sit, sit at anchor for another 10 or 15 minutes and I'll make some traces up for the rough ground. So I took my baits back out and this one here has just kind of peeled off. And then when I drifted into it, there's no there. Yeah, that was a weird one. Anchored up on rough ground now, so I'm using my grapple anchor. Slightly deeper here, so I'm going to have to put out more rope. Same rods, same rigs as before, sliding ledger rigs, but this time I'm using bigger baits. Bigger baits on bigger hooks. Now on one rod, this rod, I've put down a full macro flapper on a tenno. This is going to be for like my big ling, my big conga. On my other rod, because I don't know what's going to be down here, there could be bullos, could be any, could be small eels, could be small ling, could be... I'm sending some macros. That's some mackerel strips are going down on a 6 oh The first few bites will dictate to me what I do. Because if I keep finding that I keep getting loads of bites on the bigger hook and I don't hook up, that's because there's smaller fish down there. So I'll change that to a smaller hook rig. Yeah, just exactly the same, just a sliding ledger again, but with a small hook. The potential issue with using a smaller hook is bigger fish can swallow it down deep and you want to try and avoid deep hooking things if you can. So we'll find out. First few fish will dictate what we do. We are fishing into a snaggy area now, we're fishing into like a really rough area. So we're going to need to be on top of it. You can't be waiting too long for these bites to develop. If you wait too long, they're going to go in a snag. Dogfish coming in backwards. Little scrappy conger eel. <clears throat> He's from right down in amongst the rocks. See by how dark he is. See by. The key is getting the fish on the feed. Getting that scent trail down there, getting the fish out. Generally, you'll catch the small ones first, and then the big ones will move in and they'll push the small ones away. Just got a fish to run. You wouldn't 
believe such a small eel could get an entire mackerel in its mouth. Greedy so and so. This one's an eel and it's got itself bound up in secret. Put a glove on to try and pull it out. But yeah, fingers crossed they'll start getting bigger. I'm trying out a new spot. One last roll of the dice. Yeah, the mark where I was at, I just kept getting dogfish and little tiny eels. That's not what I'm after. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying one more little spot. I've got some nice baits. I've got some good baits down on the bottom now. I'm sat perfectly on a piece of rock. It's calmed right off in here. I'm, I'm a little bit closer in shore than what I was. So yeah, fingers crossed we'll be able to pull out a couple of good fish before the end. It's always just one more cast in it. One more cast, one more drop, five more minutes. I think you've got to be an optimist to be an angler, don't you? Fat pouting. God, he really is. What he really was a greedy guy. That there is pressure. Yeah. Uh, it's barotrauma, the same as like when a diver gets the bends. Yeah, that little pouting there took an entire mackerel side. Greedy guy. There's a few different names I'm on depending where you're from. Like from where I'm from in North East, we used to call him a bib or a bleg. Proper names of pouting. Just more little eels. I feel them getting old a bit like that when as soon as you lift him to them, they just go. Hmm. I don't know where the big ones are hiding today. Well, this isn't what was supposed to happen. <laughs> Something keeps mugging me off. Something on the bigger rods keeps mugging me off. So I thought I'll send my little bait down there to try and find out what it is, because it's probably going to be something small. And this feels like it's hooked into something that's all right, actually. But it's on a really light hook length as well, so I'm concerned. I'm thinking it bull hush. Just by the way it's twanging round. Oh no way. Like a ten pound conger eel on the smallest rig. Oh well, there it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought the way that it was fighting it was going to be like a bream or something like that or something small. Something like two pound. And instead I've caught <laughs> I've caught like the biggest deal of the day on this, on the spinning rod. Yeah, I hope you got to see it. The line that I was using it was only 30 pound line, so it was bound to snap. But yeah, if it's if it is just a pack of them down there, they're probably Arguing with each other, which is why I keep getting false bites. I just couldn't latch into them in the end. Yeah, no matter what I tried, I put big baits down and they just rattled at them. Put little baits down and congers bit all of them and snapped me off. And I do suspect that there was a spur dog kicking about as well because my baited feathers went down. I had like a real aggressive bite on it, got on my 10 or 12 wines on it and just went tsh, bit off clean. Now, a ling might have done it, but yeah, the, the clean cut, I'm suspecting it was a spell. Yeah, I have given it as long as I possibly could. I'm, I'm late for me tea already. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. 
Sila.